agenda meeting at the Design Review Board to order. It's 531 uh, on Thursday, September 12th. Uh, I'd like to do a roll call. Uh, Mr. Gaffer is excused. He indicated he'd be out of town. Uh, Commissioner Green? Here. Commissioner Conklin? Here. Myself here. Uh, Chair Davis indicated he would be out of town, so he's excused. Commissioner Sky? Present. Commissioner Lepley? Here. And I was informed by Mrs. Williams that Ms. Johns, our city council liaison, will not be here tonight. So she is excused. Um, before we begin, I want to make sure that uh, all applicants know that all applications on the DRB agenda will require a building permit or a sign permit. That design review board approval does not necessarily reflect the views and policies of SHPO, the State Historic Preservation Office. They're based in Phoenix, uh, which controls decisions impacting tax status of designated contributing historic properties. Uh, we encourage you to review SHPO's policies. If necessary, contact them directly before making any exterior changes to your properties. And we'll start with call to the public. Uh, Nina, did anyone sign up for call to the public? I didn't see any names out there. Okay, and this is just an opportunity to speak to anything that's not on tonight's agenda. Okay. Then let's move on to agenda item one. This is application 19-46. In the residential historic district, it's a non-contributing property in number 992. The address is 14A Art Avenue. The applicant is Matt McFarland. Um, sounds close to my last name. And uh, before I forget, uh, we did note just prior to the meeting that this application didn't have the site map or assessor's map attached. So NIDA will be providing that to all commission members. So we do ultimately have a complete packet. Uh, unfortunately, we weren't able to get that done before tonight's meeting began. I think we all know where our um, Okay, still, that's what our application requires. So, um, And just as a favor to me, if you would, as the temporary chair tonight, uh, which I mentioned, if you can wait till I recognize you to speak, that's actually the commission protocol for City of Bisbee Commissions. I don't know that it's ever actually been stated clearly to us. It hasn't in the time that I served. It was just understood. But I would just ask that we try that out since we're a small meeting and a small commission tonight, uh, just for the sake of discourse and making sure everyone gets an opportunity to be heard. So if commissioners are so agreed. Do you want us to wave our hat? Yeah, that would be good, yeah. Some, some easy visual for me that's not too distracting. So I'll kind of be monitoring. Commissioner Lepley, you got your hand raised, yes? I'm testing the hand uh, raising. Uh, and, and as you can see, it worked. Okay. <laughs> So some gesture not seen to let me know that you want to speak would be appreciated. So uh, I just there's someone here to represent the applicant today. So if you could come up with that microphone up there, and that, that, that microphone's on, yes? Mm -hmm. Yes, And just give us a brief overview of the application. State that your name and address, please. Thank you, Commissioner Skye. Uh, Doug Lange from DMG Contractors, uh, 408 East Bishop. I'm here representing Matt McFarland tonight. Uh, I just have to apologize. I don't know a great deal about this. This is my uh, son's client, but I had to fill in the last moment here to try and answer any questions. So I think the application is pretty much self-explanatory. The windows change out from old single panes because we took a hodgepodge of various things. We're going to pictures, of course. Pretty much portrays that. So he wants to do uh, double homes and trim out. Sky. Can they be repaired? Are they repairable, they're, they're mostly, the windows? They're mostly 70 single pane sliders. Oh, sliders, it, okay. Yeah, it, it's mostly, in fact, I, I think there might be a couple of windows that are sort of original, but uh, can present the repair. Commissioner Conklin? Did anybody, any of us, I didn't get up here, was there anybody that got a chance to go up to this house? 
You did? Yeah, I was up there for a streets thing, and uh, it's on the right. I think it's the uh, same color as your shirt a little bit. Um, darker. It's like a dark blue, purplish house. Um, it could use new windows. Aluminum sliders? Yeah. Okay. <coughs> that answers your question, Commissioner. Other questions for the applicant? I have one question or one thought. This has come up before when uh, applicants have been doing major window changes where you'll have single hung or double hung windows together if they're going to be vinyl to add a trim piece divider between them so it gives more the look of original oh, window sets. Yeah. That's the way we do it. Okay. Um, just because in the original pictures we had, there wasn't any, it didn't indicate that we had a divider between the double Yeah, like I said, I, I wasn't part of the application process, but obviously someone could be drawn, but uh, mm -hmm. try to generally portray what, what and, they want. Okay, Commissioner Skye. Uh, on this photograph here, you have the cooler, and then, so you're going to put a window in there and then put the cooler in the window, or you're planning on putting a cooler with plexiglass above the cooler instead of a window altogether. I don't know that I can answer that right now. I, I would assume he wants an entire new window and insert a cooler that well, would be appropriate for that purpose. It says, uh, okay. But this is the last picture. Okay, so All right. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure that they're putting a window there and said not just a cooler in the hole and then some plexiglass in the other hole. Uh, I, no, I, I believe it was an entire window start over again. Okay. Your questions answered. Yes, Mr. Scott. Thank you. In any event, that's what I would recommend. Okay. Commissioner, Lohar, um, the siding of the building um, generally when you do a full replacement of windows, you, you have a pretty limited selection of window sizes. So comparing the old window opening size to the, the new windows that you're ordering, uh, to make up any uh, difference, especially if it's uh, the new windows are smaller than the old opening, um, do you know how they uh, plan to make up for the different sizes if you're going to replace the siding with the same uh, size. I would assume that, that his choices of windows are going to be close enough to the opening sizes that we are faced with that problem. We intend to trim out with a, a fairly wide trim. I believe the city looks for something in the neighborhood of about five inches thereabouts so in width. Is he, um, it's your son, right? Your, I'm sorry? The contract is your son? Yes. Yes. Is he ordering um, these windows at custom size? No. no. Not, not to my so. knowledge. I believe he's already purchased them, of course, from what, I, what I'm understanding. Okay, because uh, the numbers here, it, it almost looks like they're custom sizes. So one width is 35, one is 32, one's 34 and a half, one's 36, um, 41 inches. So it looks like they're going to be custom sizes, uh, which would be great for the window opening size, but... Um, Again, I can't answer whether he asked for that or not. Commissioner, you know, does that answer your question or leaves it? Uh, it leaves the question open. Okay. Were there other questions or comments from the applicants? Second. We're trying to pull up an actual photograph of the windows. Because mm -hmm. we have a skew and stuff, and there's not uh, American Craftsman windows. Okay, these are just those run the mill Home Depot here. Okay. All right, are we going to make a vote? Well, let me just make sure any other questions or feedback for the applicants. Uh, hopefully, the sizes of the windows stay the same. I would agree with Ben there. Okay. So, if there aren't other questions, you can sit down if you want. Commissioner Buckley has another question or comment? Uh, just a comment. Yes. Um, I would say, as drawn, um, it's definitely an improvement on this house, um, and I, I wouldn't want to discourage it or delay it. Um, but making sure that it's as drawn and 
what I want to avoid is like a, a new window and then a strip of plywood next to it that doesn't match or something. That's really my only concern. Well, that isn't what we do. So, so uh, I just wanted to get verification. That, because yeah. I, we see it all the time. Yeah. So. We're professionals. We, we go out. Yeah. And then say, Commissioner right. Lepley or any other commissioners, if, if that's a concern, obviously you can include it in your recommendation on the application as a condition, just so that it's clear. I understand that for the applicant, it may seem like overkill, but if, given that we've had some cases come up before that has happened on other projects, you know, you can amend the application proposal as well, if the, if the applicant's agreeable to that. Other questions, Commissioner Conklin? I would encourage Ben to make the motion. Oh, okay. Um, I, uh, I make a motion to approve uh, DRB application 19 46, provided the windows fit some snugly into uh, the existing opening size, or if they're not, they are trimmed. Uh, And I would second it with the of what I mentioned previously, uh, which is that for any of the side by side windows, that there be a appropriate trim to separate them, which the applicant is agreeable to. So with that, I would second it. All in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? We get to go. Thank you all very much. Thank you for your time. Okay, on um, to our next agenda item. Uh, agenda item two, this is application 19-49 in the Bisbee Commercial Historic District. Uh, this is a contributing property at 105 Main Street, uh, Tombstone Canyon. The applicant is Robert Willis. Uh, it says Copper Glass. I don't know if that's your person's uh, name. That's actually the owner of the building. Okay. If you want to step up to the microphone, please, and uh, tell us your name and address. Thank you, Commissioner Scott. My name is Jesse Lavo. Um, my address is 528 North Ledge Street. Um, Copper Glance and Robert Willis is the owner of the building. We're renting, leasing the building. Okay, thank you for that clarification. And if you could just give us a brief overview of the application you provided to us for the signage that uh, you're proposing to put up uh, over the enterprise. Okay, uh, there's an existing bracket um, outside of the space that uh, we would like to hang appropriately sized. Um, it, it's going to be made out of metal on wood and uh, hand painted by the same um, uh, gentleman who painted the signs um, on the road coming into Bisbee. So um, we chose the black background. Uh, using the exact same material that was used on the black signs uh, all throughout this be the museum, I believe that's one of them, um, down the highway on the way out of town where the um, copper mine is. So the um, design on the sign is our logo for the business. Okay, uh, questions for the applicant, Commissioner Chomper and Commissioner uh, Sky. Which one is your logo? Uh, Namsen. That, that's your logo on that. Uh, if, if we were to make changes to anything on the side, <coughs> that is the logo that actually is with your business. Yes. Yeah. <coughs> Commissioner Scott? Yeah, I was going to ask if the cup and the fork and the knife and the uh, present at the bottom of the sign was a part of your logo. That's that is the only part that is not actually part of our logo. We put that on there instead of writing words, tea, treats, and gifts. We thought it was a little more tasteful. I agree with that. But I mean, that if uh, that would just disappear, would that be a huge issue for you? Um, no, I mean, we would uh, find another way to advertise what we're selling, I guess. Yeah. Commissioner Conklin? The reason why is it makes it look kind of commercial, kind of like Starbucks or, or something like that. It kind of throws that 
mall vibe out, you know what I mean? So uh, we discussed what your your application came up, but there was nobody to represent it last time. And so that was one of the topics that came up was the um, icons, is that what we call them as icons? Mm -hmm. Is that we were, as a board, I'm not excuse for the whole board, but a few of us, we didn't, we weren't really feeling that, uh, the icons. So um, I would recommend that they be removed. So, would you like you to step up? Go ahead and step, step up to the up. microphone, please. Thank you. Okay. Uh, my name is Han Leva, and I'm also the uh, home member of the business. Uh, I just have a question that, so in case we need to take that icon out, can we put the, the letter T, T, T on it? We would need to. Sure we would need to see uh, how it's going to look on the side before we approve it. Uh, yeah. um, in well, my like Mr. Speck, Mr. Speck. Um, actually, Commissioner Compton, if we know what the lettering will be, we could approve it tonight. Um, but again, that's up to the vote of the commissioners. Commissioner Sky? Uh, I like this sign, and I think it looks great, and it looks old fashioned everything if those are gone and wouldn't the letters have to be uh letters that would coincide with something out of the design review board handbook are you referring like to the logo the logo name not send or the tea house or would be what kind of let i mean what kind of letters i think we would want like to be these? consistent with the tea house font which is actually a font called copper plate uh, which is an old style font mm -hmm. I would, I would be uh, fine with the copper plate font for those three words. And, and even some sort of like a bullet point or vertical line or dash that separates the three words because they're going to be in a row, so you're going to want to have to. I think Commissioner Compton and then Commissioner Green. Commissioner Compton? You never answered Mr. Scott's question. Which is? I forget. But what was the question, question Commissioner Scott? Oh, I was Anyways, um, I disagree, Mr. Lepley. I think I want to see it before I approve it. Okay. <coughs> Commissioner Green? Um, it's obvious you're a tea house, because it says tea house in the old fashioned font, which is, I'm fine by that. Um, so that gets rid of the teacup because it's the tea house. Then you've just got the fact you do food and you have gifts. So why not food, gifts, and more in the old font at the bottom and get the modern signage symbolism out? And I think everybody would be happy with that. Would you be able to do that? Um, That's what we were talking about, that we insert the icon Yes. Put on just tea, treats, and gift. So, and use the same uh, farm with the farm on the bottom. Okay. But what he's saying is that? that you already, it says tea house very big and clear. Uh -huh. So, why does why do you need to write tea on there again? Well, because right? we not only serve tea, we also sell tea. Okay. Oh, okay. So, and I think uh, tea house is sort of a new thing for a lot of people, so obviously they assume they'll be tea, but um, we felt it's important to distinguish that a tea house is tea, treats, and gifts. Okay. And there's retail as well. I mean, me personally, I probably would look at it, and even if it said tea at the bottom, I'd be like, it's a tea house, and they have tea, like, <laughs> I guess uh, that no, makes sense. It's tea house. Yeah, <laughs> but I mean, that's... Other questions or feedback for the applicants? Um, I think we're kind of a little jumbled here. So sounds like uh, sounds like Mr. Green can make the motion. <laughs> make the motion. Okay. Uh, well, I'll make a motion that your sign will be accepted, provided you remove the um, logo. Uh, sorry, the uh, symbolism, and replace it with words describing the tea, the food and gifts and your application 19-49 i propose to be accepted with those conditions 
I'll second that motion. Seconded by Commissioner Sky. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Good luck with your business. Good, Good luck, guys. Good. Good luck. Look forward to getting to you. Right. Thank you. Okay. Moving on. Agenda okay. item number three. This is application 19 50 on the Bisbee Residential Historic District. This is non contributing property 710 at 51 Wood Canyon. Uh, John and Jane Daly. Uh, are the applicants and the representative is Jeffrey Plunkett. Uh, Mr. Plunkett, if you'd come up here and just give us your name and address, and then again a brief overview of the application, which we've already received. Uh, Jeffrey Plunkett, uh, 51 Wood Canyon. And, uh, a little more form now this time here. And before I explain it, I just want to say that a, because it was brought up to me, I wasn't unaware of the you know the horizontal lines. The, so anyways, um, the modification I'm proposing is the stairwell, which is the only place that you can see from the road, that I would use redwood you know, uprights on that you know, for the balusters. And, that's, and, and, then, and then leave the rest of it the same cables because the homeowners would like low maintenance. And I think it would look good. But that's, I talked about with them and we're asking if the committee would consider that modification and approve it. So, what else do you need to know besides explaining what it is? Or well, if, if you want, we can open it up to questions or feedback from the commissioners and they can take it from there. Okay. Uh, I think Commissioner Conklin and then Commissioner Leppling. I'm against the horizontal stainless steel wire. Uh, it's not uh, historic. It has no uh, additive that... It has any. It has any uh, uh, You know, it, it it doesn't contribute to to the district in any way. And it, there has been applications where that's been done in Old Bisbee. It most likely hasn't been approved by this board. It's um, but that's why I was going with just the staircase because that's the only part you can see from the road. You can't see that backyard from the road. But at the same time, it's. Uh, it's not setting a good precedence for the board. <clears throat> Any other questions? Right. Commissioner Lepley and then um, Commissioner Scott. I will note that the house was built in 1988 and stainless steel cable was used back then. Um, that's just my my two cents on, on that. Though generally I would agree with Mr. Papa. Uh, especially if it was an older house. But since the house was 1988, I would just say I don't, I don't feel that. Mm -hmm. there, my point is it wouldn't detract from the historic character of the house because the house is not historic. I would just, just to remind you, Frank, as all commission members, because this has come up before for us as a commission, uh, the general guidance of, of the design review guidelines is to be not just dealing with existing historic properties, but also new builds so they complement and don't in some way detract from the historic district. So that's been the general guidance we've received from the city of Bisbee in terms of interpreting the design review guidelines, although that may be something we can revisit when we hopefully form the, a committee to update them. That has been the general guidance we've received uh, versus applicants, not this applicant, but past applicants who said, oh, I tried to match the period of the building, which is non-historic, and do a modification that matched that period. And we've gotten pretty clear guidance from the city of Bisbee that that's actually not an, an, a correct interpretation of the design review guidelines. The goal is to be trying to preserve the historic district and enhance it with any work that's done to a structure. Commissioner I, I, I agree with you because uh, what could happen is you could have one house that's contributing structure perfect intact, you know, example, every third house that got approved, for instance, if it was a, uh, a non-contributing structure, we could come into these type of situations where it completely takes away from the district. And that's just, just an example. Uh, I'm going to stay firm on, on no horizontal wire on this application, uh, but uh, that's going to be up to the board to um, make their own decision. I'm going to, Commissioner, sorry, um, I'm going to switch and actually 
um, agree with Mr. Conklin. Okay. Um, I think it might be helpful, Commissioner Conklin, uh, just in terms of other recommendations to the applicant as well, and then can, so that he has some other concrete ideas of, well, if not X, then what? We're getting to that. Okay. <coughs> Commissioner Sky? All right. So you say it can't be seen. We Here's what happens all the time. You got people say, well, you can't see the windows because they're in the back of the house. And then they want to put whatever they want to put in there. And we don't ever allow that. So now you're asking us because you can't see the pickets to approve this. Well, then that's the same exact thing. And then uh, the, so when you put something on one house, yeah. whether it's a 1988 house or not, then the next time the neighbor comes by that has a 1906 house and they say, why can't I put this on my house? My neighbor's got it on their house. So yeah, I, that's I, I, another I, reason why we, I will stand firm against the wire. And then pretty much, so you have it there. And then I would suggest again, that you put wood pickets because then you might or, or then you would definitely have a better chance of walking out of here and being able to work on the day. Well, well that's, I was just going to say, I'm, I'm done arguing with that. My original okay. drawing was wood, and then the owner saw some cables, and they mm -hmm. said, hey, let's go cables. Yes. So anyway, so no, we Great. want to get this done, because if you, as you can see, the doors on there, I think they put those in originally when they built the house. You can see it's all set up for a deck. Mm -hmm. And back in June, the insurance companies were around, and they said, you got to have something there. So that's why I'm here now, and the, I, the wire's out, and it would be redwood, nice redwood all the way around, and that's what I would, now I'm asking. Well, I personally would like to see that house move to Flagstaff. <laughs> I don't know that Commissioner Chair, that's <laughs> what it happen, but it does sound like the representative is agreeable to the modifications that are being proposed. Right. So, if, are there other questions or concerns for Commissioner Conklin? So, we're talking about two-by-two two pickets? I think so. They're, you mean they're one and a half when they're... Oh, well... Right. The, the standard ones you buy. You're speaking carpenter, and I like it. Well, they're, I mean, still a two-by-four is not a two-by-four <laughs> three three anymore, yeah, yeah. but two, it's still yeah. called it's a two-by-four. Two it's like a two-by-two two picket. Is how far, how when you go to Home Depot, it says two-by-two two right. right there. <laughs> how, far, how far apart do they have to be? Baby like, said, what is it, four inches? Four inches. You can't have anything bigger than a four inch gap because a baby's head can fit through it. Right. And then, oh, yeah, that makes that's sense. That's it. Just think of a baby's head. Four inches. But okay. that's a code. And thing. just set it at Bisbee yeah. level. What's it? Oh, what? Just Bisbee level. Just. Oh, no, I'll be that confusing. I'm going to make a <laughs> <I'm> constructive <gonna make laughs> feedback. I'd like to make a motion. Okay, Commissioner. Move, but I'll make it a motion. I don't have the application uh, number in front of me. 19 50. 19 50. I would like a motion to uh, it, or to approve 1950 with the deviation from no wire to two by two pickets. I'll second that motion. Commissioner Sky seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 None opposed. With modification, your application is finally approved. Thank you very much. So, uh, if I went in, do I wait until it's actually you guys registered and uh, put it on the website or are you just walk in? You're ready to rock. There may be permits of the sort you need to see from the city separate from our approval, but in terms of our role, right. you're good right. to go. Okay. Thank you very much and thank you all for coming in. Sorry about the uh, previous mishap. Hey, sorry I lost my cool. Oh, it was an evening I, for losing no, cool. You need to my, beer, my dinner was getting cold, my beer was getting warm. You know? <laughs> People need to get upset at the DRB. That's how I ended up on you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> good evening. Have a good evening, sir. Thank you. Okay, we're on to agenda item four. Uh, this is the long awaited and discussed uh, forming of a subcommittee to update the design review guidelines. Excuse me. Nina? Yes? Hold on, Nina has a question. No, I don't have a question. I'm going to make a statement regarding yeah. this. Yes. Um, as a rule, we do not do subcommittees for the reason that we don't have staff, because you still have to do a public notice, an agenda. Some, a staff person has to be here, take the notes, do the minutes. So my suggestion is just three of you get together, and then we, you, those three can come back to the board at a work session and work through it. 
But remember, three is a slippery slope. You cannot talk to that fourth member. Thank you for that yeah. update and reminder yeah. of the open meeting law. Right. So we would say, that, just give me the term again. So we would have no more than three commission members would meet to review, mm -hmm. bring proposals at a work session. Yes. And that way everybody can work on it at the work session together with your three being the spearheads of that. Uh, in that kind of proposal, we've done work sessions before. Mm -hmm. Uh, in that kind of proposal, these three members might meet prior to that work session. Yes, they come can. Come up with proposals mm -hmm. to bring to that work session right. meeting. And if you want to make a, a motion to approve something, then we'll do a special. If you just want to work through it to get an idea of what we want to, you want to change, put it down on paper, and then we'll do the work session, and then we could go to the regular session and approve whatever you want. Um, but yes, three is a slippery slope. That means whoever is on that committee cannot talk to a fourth person. Got it. I, I have a feeling just from some of the feedback some commission members have already given, either to the chair or myself, uh, about getting this effort going, that one work session will not be sufficient. No, no. So yeah, it's going to be multiple. We we'll probably need to do multiple sessions as mm -hmm. we deal with certain sections of the guidelines come up with proposals, bring up that section for review and discussion and agreement. And as a reminder, just to commission members, we're not an independent body. So when we come up with some agreement amongst ourselves and vote on that and have approvals, that has to then go to planning and zoning for review and approval. If they don't approve, they can send it back to us for further review and discussion until mm -hmm. we come up with something that they will also approve. And then from that approval, it then goes to the city council and mayor for final review and approval, again, mm -hmm. an opportunity for them to not approve or send back to us. Assuming we get to the final stage of approval there, then it gets adopted into the code. If Correct. I understand the process. Mm -hmm. So I guess, just so I'm clear, mm -hmm. as temporary chair, what we're proposing tonight is simply to have a group of no more than three members of the commission start work on the design review guidelines. Mm -hmm. And at the point that we think we have sufficient material for the whole commission to review, then we'll call a special or a work session right. uh, for the commission to specifically be meeting just to review those design review guideline changes. Yes. I got it? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Commissioner Conklin. But you're just trying to show off your bicep. That's really what you're doing. That's right. Is that <laughs> nice? But would we need to table this because we don't have a, a full um, board tonight? We no. Need, we wouldn't need agreement from the other two members? No, because I, you can't do a subcommittee. So it is either that way or you have meetings so and you all decide at one time. So it's an unofficial meeting in, in, in a way uh, until... If you want to get technical, yes. But because of the open meeting laws, if you have four, that's a quorum. That means that's a meeting and I have to notice it, have to agendize. But if it's three then none of that has to be done. They can do it on their own time, wherever they want to do it, and then come back to the committee, or the board, excuse me, and, and present what they wanted to do with each section of the, the guidelines. So in a way, um, this didn't even need to be on the agenda tonight. No, it did because Mr. Davis, I think, wanted it explained because mm. I'd already um, explained that to him, and he just wanted to make sure it was explained to the, the board, and so did Ms. Coleman. Um, because did you get that, Mr. Davis? <laughs> oh, good. When he listens to the recording, he will. <laughs> but yeah, so that's why we put it on there so that I could inform you that it can't be a subcommittee, but it can be three people meeting, and then we can do as many work sessions as long as we have staff time, and uh, uh, the chambers is available. We'll be happy to accommodate as much as we can. And just for commission members, just as a reminder. We also need to bring this back to all of our attention because this commission agreed previously not to go forward with this until we had a full commission, which we now have. So that's mm. also why this is being brought yeah, back missing. so that the commission members as a whole can now say, yes, we're ready to go forward based on our prior agreement discussion at a noticed meeting. So we're bringing it forward so the full commission can agree to give the green light for us to start this work. I think Commissioner Lepley, then Commissioner Conklin. Um, I would recommend just doing this through work sessions. 
and whoever comes to the work session comes to the work session and it's noticed um, you know there's public notice and it's recorded and everything but it's maybe a dialogue and no decisions are made but you would still have to bring something to them that you how you want it changed it can't just be you're going to we'd be here for hours if you were going to go from section to section to section so it needs to be uh, what you're going to bring forward to the board so that they can approve it at that not approve it but go over it and make any changes that need to go before you uh, recommend for it to go to planning and zoning which would be the existing handbook mm -hmm. changes of the reason um, which would just be changes to the existing guidelines booklet right mm -hmm. and then yes. basically three people that like homework and stuff correct get together and kind of put it together and then we decide as mm -hmm. a whole sounds good to me yeah because if you do it the other way mr lovely it's just going to take longer and, and it's not going to be a focus point of what you're working on so if three of them if it could be a contractor an architect and i don't know whomever else wants to be in on it that way that it's representative from each kind of section in that board commissioner Kaufman. I want to say thank you to Nina for the explanation. It was very good. And um, I agree with the process that we're going to do. So um, I don't have any more questions on this topic. Mm -hmm. Great. I would just like to nominate the uh, smart, retired uh, guys that, to put it together so we can make some good decisions on some folks. Actually, I think you'll find that in terms of, uh, I won't come to this more retired, I think I'm the only member of this commission that actually is retired. Commissioner Gaffer still accepts work as an engineer. Commissioner Green is has an active real estate practice. Commissioner Davis accepts contracting work as a, uh, yes, yes. So, in fact, all but one of our seven members are working, actively working. Okay, uh, so only, as a retiree, yes, I'm agreeable to serve you. I will uh, refer and say people with lots of time on their hands who take jobs when they feel like it. If I'm understanding Ms. Williams' feedback, I think at this point we need to simply vote of the commission to agree to initiate. Well, there's no vote that needs to go. It just needs to be an understanding that that's what you're going to do. So then just an agreement or an understanding that we are going to start. Yes. Up to three people will be working on this, calling special sessions periodically, mm -hmm. right, to update the full commission, and then discussion and voting on any proposed changes. And if I could ask, um, if you could give me at least a week in advance of when you would like a work session. Okay, I think we can do that. Okay. Any other questions, thoughts, concerns about this? Does everyone feel comfortable voting on this without a... Peter Gaffer, president. Or no, we president. actually don't. We don't need a vote. No. This is more just an just FYI discussion. for the whole commission. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Lovely. I'm generally available Wednesdays and Thursdays. Thank you. Would Would this be like the all day session for three people, and then we would all get together? Is that how we would? I would expect it would be based on the availability of three members if three are going to meet at the same time. Mm -hmm so that it'd probably be more limited than an all-day affair. It might be a two or three hour at most yeah. meeting. Commissioner Cox? Will there be snacks? <laughs> it all depends upon who hosts the meeting. Thank you, Mr. Reparton. You're welcome, Commissioner Cox. So, are there any other questions, thoughts, before we move on to the next item? Doesn't look like it. All right, uh, staff comments. I don't know if there's anything uh, that you need to let us make us aware of. Well, I, you did address it earlier, but um, when I go back to listen to the minutes, there's a lot of crosstalk, and I can't sometimes understand who's talking and what the point is. So I would ask that if we try to be mindful that you don't talk over somebody else and let them finish their sentence, and, and like you suggested, just putting your hand up or making a motion so he knows or Mr. Davis knows. Thank you, Madge. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Conklin? But you could also be getting a lot of crosstalk from um, applicants. Sometimes, but mostly it's the board. <laughs> Are we the worst ones? I'm sure we keep her busy. Well, here's the problem. Just like this evening earlier, uh, 
there was a, a row of people that were supposed to go, and then I got totally cut out because I wasn't aggressively like throwing my hand up, even though I was told that I was going to be after uh, Mr. Conklin. And that, that never happens. happened. So what I do is I just start uh, talking out of turn. Yeah, guess. and so we, and we can't do that. You really can't, and, and you I shouldn't. Just, Commissioner. Commissioner Sky, if I didn't enforce that when I acknowledged or you had your hand up before, that is the challenge of a So group. that's why I get to the point where I'm just like, yeah, okay, whatever. And then I but if I can make a suggestion, if that does happen, whether it's me, Commissioner Davis, whoever, it's not inappropriate as a commission member just to say, excuse me, I believe I was next. Okay. And end of story, and as a general rule, other commission members, with other commissions I've served on, we usually go, my bad, sorry, go ahead. Okay. And it just helps to reinforce the process. Right. So it doesn't, it, it enforces to everyone. We all need to pay attention collectively, not just the chair, but all of us to see who's supposed to speak next, right? Commissioner Conklin. I feel that ra raising our hands, it's, it's tiresome. We should have like little flags or like a beeping system that would be It'd be more appropriate. Uh, um, since I'm not the uh, chair, thankfully, uh, you can make that suggestion to Commissioner Davis when he comes back. I think whatever works for the whole group, whether it's a more subtle nod from the chair, <coughs> part of their role is to is to navigate the communication stream so it's clear for applicants, for the reporter, and commission staff, as well as for all the commission members. Uh, so whatever works. You can speak with him about that and see what works. It just reminds me whenever I'm in school, but I figure, I feel that we should have a more sophisticated way to take our turn. Well, some of the committees that I do go down the row, like the chair will be in the middle and they'll start on one side or start on the other side and they let each person speak on that agenda item. That's what we do for the ones that I do. So, see, how does that suggestion sound, Commissioner Powell? Fine, thank you. So, we've got many options, so we can have clear communication and everyone gets heard. Uh, any other comments from No, staff? that's it. Thank, Thank you. you, Nina. Uh, so, future agenda items, I know we've got a meeting coming up in a few weeks anyway, which we requested agenda items for. Anything else that anyone wants to see on that October agenda? Um, on agenda item four, are we going to wait until we've got a full board? to designate the three persons that will be communicating themselves <coughs> about the guidelines. Yes. Uh, I'm sorry, you said, you said the question again. Are we waiting until we have a full board to choose the three persons that will be working on the sidelines on the guidelines? Um, I can actually send out an email requesting if who would like to be on that committee and then I can get with you and Mr. Davis and say, this is who it is, so we just need to narrow it down. How does that sound as a proposal? Yeah. But remember, do not reply all to any email that I yeah. send out. Yeah. Just reply to me. <laughs> so, commission members, does that sound like an agreeable way to, as the next step? Mm -hmm. I think we should just discuss it when we're all here, personally. Discuss what? Discuss this topic when everybody's here. If that can whatever you would like to do Commissioner well, Conklin the problem that we have uh, Mr. McPartment and Mr. Green is we have tons of vacancies during our meetings where we have members who aren't here so it makes it very complicated whenever we come into regular session now, this is a special session so I can understand why somebody would have something else uh, scheduled but that's the reason why it's so important that we have regular attendance on this board. So whenever we get into these situations and those type of questions come up, that we are able to have a conversation as a board and then we don't have that unknowing factor of what Mr. Davis and Mr. Gaffer are going to say because they're not here. And then I think it's kind of, um, what I don't <coughs> like about the email proposal no offense, Madam. Oh, no, I just suggested. Is, is that um, I like to see human interaction. I want to see, uh, not just on this topic, but I want to see, you know, where people are at on it. And you can't really see that over email. So I do like uh, Mr. Green's 
um, uh, comment or that it would be good to have a full board whenever it comes time for these meetings. So we need to insist on full attendance whenever it comes time for this. So how about at the next meeting on October 2nd, I'll put this item on there. It'll be discussion and possible action to appoint whomever is going to be on there. Do we have any excused absences for the next meeting? Not to my knowledge. Nobody's told me that they weren't Okay, ready. so we have a full board? We should. Okay. Well, I feel... I, I feel and that. we can keep bringing it back to the agenda. If there's not a full board, we can bring it back again. But, but, mm -hmm. but the problem with that is, is that... Um, it delays the process, and month. I get that. Yes. A month. So Which has already been delayed by about, I'd say, a year and a half now from when it was first proposed. Commissioner Green. Um, we're all volunteers. We're not paid to be here. We can't make the board members show up. So it's best to keep all the board members reasonably happy to get a full attendance. Last meeting was a full attendance. And the two gentlemen that aren't here tonight stated at that meeting they wouldn't be available for the special meeting, which is the meeting we're at now. I think it works great. I think we work great. And more often than not, we have quorum. I think there's only been two occasions I've come to a meeting and there hasn't been quorum and we've got over it other ways by telephonic means. Um, I don't think it's a big issue. But if we're going to have a discussion about who the three people are to be appointed to do this sideline activity, I want everybody who have a chance to volunteer to do it. And that's my sentiment. I do, I do agree with you, uh, Mr. Green, on this. But at the same time, we all have different skills, right? We have architects, uh, engineers, sure. uh, construction workers. So it is important that we have full boards. And and I and I take very much a lot of pride in being at these meetings. And I mean, you could probably look at my absentee rate as well. I'm at every single meeting. So I think we need to make a, a strong um, attempt to be at these meetings, even if we have to uh, postpone some of the personal things, which, yeah, it does make us happy. But um, I take this board seriously, very seriously, and I feel it's important that we're here. Um, that's my personal sentence. Um, so hopefully uh, on this next uh, meeting, we'll have a full meeting or a full uh, Board. board and uh, we'll be able to come up with the uh, uh, the people that want to be on the, the uh, unofficial commission <clears throat> any other thoughts or comments so if uh, I hear from the varying viewpoints to me it sounds like we're going to put this on the October agenda mm -hmm. uh, Discuss again with um, possible action. Possible action. Okay. Uh, maybe a, maybe an email to let everybody know mm. that we need everybody here if possible, or else it'll be postponed another month. Okay, I can do that. That way, everyone knows that they that you know that we want them to show up. Commissioner mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Scott. Okay. We were on future agenda item suggestions, so are there other agenda items beyond that which will be on the October agenda that people want to propose? I don't have anything. Okay. Would someone like to propose adjourning the meeting? <laughs> propose to adjourn. Is there a second? I'll second that motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The meeting is adjourned. You didn't raise your hand to do that second.